like a professional operation. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean seem like? Okay, sir, shop duck, uh, take two, four, niner, five, <laughs> six, seven. My name's Lucas Harwood. I play bass in King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Shop talk. What's your favorite thing about playing in King Gizzard? The freedom, I think. It's so, so free and open. And yeah, I think we just get just more and more like that as we, we go on. Anyone can do whatever they want. Like, you know, we're all multi-instrumentalists um, and we just, you know, just follow our noses when we're recording. You guys tackle a lot of different genres, obviously, in the band. Uh, do you have a favorite? I don't know. I think I, it, just, it just ebbs and flows with, like, how you're feeling. Like, in my own time, I, like, probably listen to like a lot more chill stuff but then you know when i'm feeling it i love love the heavy stuff as yeah well. yeah who do you kind of connect with most in the band i guess the obvious answer is Cavs. yeah the drummer i guess like now the you know the production is a bit bigger and we've got like a nice big riser up there for the both of us and every now there's very rare occasion i'll like jump down the front and like I don't know, when I'm feeling extra confident. <laughs> but then as soon as I do that, it just like feels weird. Name some of your major influences from uh, either bass players, bands, <clears throat> uh, concert experiences. Yeah, you know, we, we saw the, the Dead the other night. Um, and, you know, Phil Lesh doesn't, doesn't play, in, play with Dead & Co anymore. But yeah, he's, he's a definite influence. I love, I love his tone, like obviously he's playing, but the way his tone kind of pokes out a lot. And I think I've been slowly, I think it's a confidence thing as well. Like my tone is like slowly becoming brighter as I get older and like maybe better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I just have the confidence to like poke out a little more. You know, playing with a pick helps that. But um, yeah, I guess way more groove bass. It's like definitely Bernard Edwards. I'm like huge Nile Rogers, Chic fan. Like, yeah, love love disco. Tina Weymouth, Carol Kay. You know, I guess the classics. There's an Australian band, The Drones, who are like one of my favorite bands ever. And Fiona Kitchen, the um, bass player for their band, is is incredible as well. Yeah. Do you always play with a pick? Um, mostly. I would, I would say I've like been playing with my fingers a little bit more. Uh, in my first band we kicked out our basses. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I bought a pawn shop bass and, and just yeah, naturally just started playing with a pick. I guess it was, it was kind of like, I don't know what we were doing in like our circles of bands. Like we were very, you know, very much like 60s garage inspired, like all the bands we were playing in when we were teenagers. And yeah, everyone, it was, it was kind of like lame if you played bass with your fingers because <laughs> it wasn't like 60s. <laughs> I play with flat wounds and yeah, so the pick helps it cuts through because the, the tone of those strings are a lot deader. Yeah. And um, you know, it just means I can play fast and I gotta play fast sometimes. Are you playing only short scale these days? Yeah, yeah. I, I, got, a, I got a full scale recently and quickly regretted it <laughs> I don't think yeah I think I'm a lifer on the short scale what kind of effects do you like to use um pretty simple all I have is a a like pretty driven overdrive it's a EQ devices special cranker uh -huh. and like on all the metal stuff and I guess like not a go on and that hard rock stuff I've, I've pretty much just got that on constantly I've got the a bass big muff, and then I've got the a, a wah after that, you know, which is just that classic kind of effect. I guess it's more of a like guitar lead thing, but right. it sounds sick on bass as well. The band obviously isn't afraid to stretch out and uh, you know go on some tangents for long periods of time. How do you stay focused? How do you kind of know where you are <laughs> at any given time? I mean, you you kind of get lost quite often. <laughs> is that the goal? <laughs> I, gu I guess so, but you know, I guess my job is to like keep everyone grounded, but like, you know, I definitely get lost 
and <laughs> but that's you know it's the beauty of it now when that happens I don't freak out you know are you good at mathematics I think I'm like slightly slightly better at it now with all our, our timing but you know a lot of the timing signature stuff <clears throat> it's very rare that I'm like counting I find that you just like you internalize a riff and you know you, you feel it like you know when you come up with something that's not in 4-4 four, four, like it's usually because it feels natural to you 7 feels very natural to us because mm -hmm. <laughs> we use it so much so we uh, we recently built you a 5 string short scale microtonal bass can you yeah. tell us why <laughs> <laughs> good question yeah I think when people like look particularly at this at this fretboard they're like what what is going on there and i think i think it looks way more complicated than it seems or like i don't know way more complicated than i use it and yeah but basically you know when we started making microtonal music the bass kind of kind of came second a little bit like as an instrument like you know, we did some weird stuff where we'd tune one string up or down a half step and kind of do some weird, like, shortcuts like that. You know, because we started making that album as an experiment and we didn't know whether we'd, like, make a whole album. I bought, like, a $500 uh, Gibson. <laughs> Gibson? Gibson. With a V? G-I-V-S-O-N. <laughs> it's... I've still got it. It's, like, a, it's a crazy weird shape and a full scale actually but I never really liked it yeah. <laughs> it kind of it made the album and then it, it's you know up on the roof gathering dust <laughs> the first album like I just had a handful of frets and they would just go all the way through um, and there wasn't there wasn't heaps because we just that old album is like pretty much in one scale which is like a F sharp Dorian with a flat two and a flat six so like but then there was like a few things that tripped us up like the the intro to nuclear fusion and that's why it's like you know it gets really busy in here because I know the guitars are pl just playing one note in that intro but the bass is like So that kind of necessitated a few more frets and then, uh, you know, we even did tours where like we would only play a select few microtonal uh, songs and, you know, for whatever reason we were just having to be really economical with the amount of gear we brought and I used sticky frets and, uh, you know, I think there was like one there and like one here just on my standard bass and I just it had just one. stuck on. Yeah, just, just stuck <laughs> on. I think I just did that for like one tour. And yeah. I like started to peel off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When we started making KG and LW, you know, Stu was really wanting to expand to the like kind of microtonal universe that we're in. Um, I was at probably more than half of the bass on both those albums is all MIDI mm. because Stu was like, you know, trying to explore keys that we hadn't in our kind of microtonal world you know such as the pace of, of gizzard we just never got around to like re-record you know making this bass and re-recording right, it right. so we kind of you know when it got around to touring it we're like well, we have to make something that can play all the songs of these three albums so you know this this is kind of what came out of that and yeah like I, I just sat down and like literally went through all of our songs and was like what notes do I need and like what notes don't I need anyway so it, it looks it looks really weird but I guess you kind of get used to the patterns and I'm not I'm not moving around too much because when I move around that's when I get confused <laughs> it looks like a bit of a maze but I don't know, I guess it makes sense to me. I really like Plural, which is one of Joey's songs. I mean, it's a cool microtonal one. Yeah. Do you 
have a pre-show routine, something that kind of gets you pumped up? Um, yeah, I guess a little bit. Like, it's not the same every time, but I don't know. We usually just, like, crank tunes backstage and, like, I don't know, usually not what you expect. Like, just fun stuff to dance to. Right, <laughs> like, right. Like, I guess, yeah, it gets pretty silly back there but yeah we're just like yeah just trying to like pump each other up and, yeah. and get excited red pill or blue pill blue pill <laughs> what scares you the most uh I, I, there's a recur I'm, I'm gonna talk about touring but there's a recurring dream we all have like quite often about <laughs> the band being on stage and like already playing or like about to play <laughs> and you know if it's me, like, you know, your bass is, like, packed away and your amp isn't working and you can't find a lead and everyone's looking at you, like, being like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's, like, literally a recurring dream that we all have. <laughs> what excites you the most? Um, jamming. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Favorite band named after a city, state, or country? All I can think of is um, Sufjan Stevens' 50 State project it's a good one yeah <laughs> love Sufjan what's your favorite salad dressing <sighs> honey mustard nice <laughs> is it true that orange socks make you a better bass player definitely I was wearing them yesterday I had a good show <laughs> nice and then lastly is there anything that you would like to tell future generations of musicians any inspiration or wisdom um, yeah I, f I feel like I'm you know I'm 32 and I've been playing for, I don't know, 15 years now. And I, I feel like I'm only just scratching the surface, you know? I think people see where I am and like see the band that we're in, but like, you know, we're just, we're learning every day. You never, you never stop learning, you know? You know, I've seen like interviews with the best jazz players in the world and they, they think the same thing, you know, you never stop learning and it's, yeah, just, just keep, pushing yourself to do that. That's actually that a little lower. Get your face in there. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>